Hey everyone, today on the plastic canvas I'm going to take you through how I painted the zombies in Zombie 15. from the plastic canvas and welcome to another zombie 15 painting video today I'm going to be running through the process that I went through to paint all of the zombie minis within zombie 15 and as you can see they were already painted so before I actually started this channel I painted all of the the zombie minis um, and if you haven't seen them yet I do have videos for each of the playable characters within zombie 15 but because I went through a bit of a different process for painting the zombies as opposed to the the characters I still wanted to put up a video to show how I went about it um, because there was such a large number of minis there's a hundred zombie minis within the game there was a really really big focus on just pumping them out really really quickly but still keeping a good enough level of finish that you know it did the job so out in the middle of the table they're still going to look good they're still going to look like zombies they're not going to look scrappy but i haven't spent a monumental amount of time on them so if you sort of think about the time that sort of goes into them with a hundred minis let's say you spend 30 minutes on each one or well, 100 times 30 is 3000 there's 3000 minutes divide that by 60 minutes you're looking at 50 hours and i was just not going to spend 50 hours painting minis when I also had the the playable characters to go and I wanted to get onto another game at some point so I needed a way to speed up the process um, look at doing some batch painting but still giving that that good enough finish so I've got sitting here the four different models that there are within the game um, this big guy here is the alpha he comes out in the later scenario so he's not seen too much so i'm going to sit him off to the side for the moment and we're going to focus on these three here so we've got that girl there this guy here and then our bigger sort of hulking guy there so these are the main ones that come out in the game these are the cannon fodder so there's 33 of each so 33 of this guy 33 of that guy and then 33 girls so obviously 99 of them all added together and the alpha one of them there's number 100 so to find a good process to go through to paint each of these minis to a good enough standard without spending too much time i just jumped on youtube and just looked at lots of different videos of people painting people painting zombies um, the most common game that came up was zombie side and there were lots and lots of good videos out there so if you have if you're looking for a good zombie video there is tons out there just have a look around but one that i did find that really sort of fit well with the the finished product that i wanted and a process that was going to give the look that i wanted was one on the Tabletop Minions channel and I'm going to put a link in the description below to it so that if you're looking for a good video you can start there and you might um you might like it as well um, it was one with Sam Lenz who does a bit of work with them he's someone that I watch a lot so I really really like his work and so I, I, I like the process that he went through um, and there are a couple of reasons why I went with that process and I'm going to run through them step by step um, but it was obviously simple fast Good way to batch paint um, but also it brought in some some really really simple contrast so that it gave the a, a pretty simple illusion of some light hit, hitting the minis so the top part of each of the minis is lighter than the bottom half so that it gives that bit of a contrast without actually having to go through too many steps to achieve that and so i'm going to run through that with these three and then I'll push them off to the side, bring the alpha in, and I'll show you how I went about painting him, which is a very similar process, but with, with a few more steps because he's a bit bigger. So for each of these, first step obviously was, was priming. So I just use a black primer, same brush on primer that you've seen me use in the other videos. Um, and I've, and, you know, and some of the earlier um, playable character videos explains why I use a brush on primer as opposed to a spray on primer so if you um, wondering why I use a brush on check that out and then the first step 
that went into the base coat was to so that the, so they were all base coated in grey, and they started with um, dark grey at the bottom, and then worked up to a light grey at the top, almost white. So what I did was um, so I started with dark grey and quite a dark grey down at his feet, worked it up to just sort of below kind of where the pants meet the shirt um, and then with with the girl here um, probably so there's sort of a bit of a belt that runs around here that was a little bit of an indicative line so I probably stopped with the dark gray maybe just about here um, and then I worked a light gray and again almost white from the head then down to that point where they then met um, and then I wet blended in, in a horizontal motion and you can actually see here if you just look about here you can see you can actually sort of see where that that tone starts to change so we've got our light tone up here and then it blends through to the dark gray through there and so by moving horizontally and then blended that light gray into the dark gray got that transition down through there So, yep, yeah, so that was the base coat. So dark grey through to light grey. And the idea is that of that was that that then sets the tone. So we've got light up the top where the light's going to be hitting, dark down the bottom where there's not going to be any light. So once I'd done that, I then went on to the skin. Now, going purely off the artwork within the game, um, the zombies have a really light blue sort of skin tone to them. Um, that was fine, looked all right, um, but I sort of prefer a bit of a browny, greeny kind of rotting flesh looking tone. And so that's why I sort of went with, with this tone. So from this point on, after I did that dark grey to light grey base coat. This is all done with washes now. There is no um, traditional sort of acrylic base coat in here. This is purely just, um, purely just washes. So I first off mixed, and now this is going to test my memory. I think I first started with Agrax Earthshade mixed with uh, Bill Tan Green. Hang on, just let me get these out. So I'm pretty sure I started with a mix of. Sorry, I'm just slide these up to the top. Give myself some room to bring in, bring in my washes. So a mix of Agrax and and if I can get it out, there we go. And Bill Tan Green. So that was where I started, but I'm sure you can already tell it was too dark, too far on the on the brown side. Um, and actually, sort of funnily enough, um, not that I can sort of you know pick them out. I'm not going to spend the time to do it. But if you look across like all of the um, all of the minis, you can actually see different tones within some of the some of the skin. And so you can sort of see um, along the way. Like I didn't necessarily mix them all the all the same. And that, that sort of worked okay because it gives a bit of variety, but there are some better flesh tones in there than, than others. So I did my first batch in, um, yeah, sort of Agrax and Biltan, um, but it was too dark. So then I moved to mixing yellow with green, um, and I think it's Cassandora yellow. Uh, if I can find that one. Yeah. So then I went to mixing... Cassandora yellow and the Bill Tan green. Um, lots of yellow, just a little bit of green because the green's very, very overpowering Went with the colour as light as the yellow. And that was better, um, but it still didn't quite have the right tone that I wanted. There was too much yellow. And I actually reckon if I sort of have a look at um, these two, uh, I reckon you can sort of see a difference between the girl, the arm of the girl there and the arm of the big guy. This one's more yellow than what this one is. And this guy here, um, I'm, I prefer that skin tone that I got there. So I reckon this is probably an earlier one with 
mainly yellow and a little bit of green. And this one here has a mix that I did a little bit later on. Um, so then, then I think the mix that I ended up with was, so the mostly Cassandora yellow, a bit of Bilg Tan green, and then some Seraphim sepia, which is, well, you know, obviously, obviously with the, the sepia name in the, CP word in the name there, um, it's a light brown, and that was, I reckon, the, that was the mix that I ended up with, so those three, those three mixed together there, so Seraphim Sepia, Cassandora Yellow, Bill Tan Green, mostly the yellow, bit of green, and then just enough of the sepia in just to, just to bring that brown out a little bit, and that'll be that mix there and sort of looking I reckon probably he's the he's the same so that was sort of the effect that I got there so then it was just a simple case of just painting painting the skin um, and as you can see um, because of the um, the shading that I worked in oh and this is sorry the, the other thing that I did with the base coat with the with the gray where I thought the shadows would be so I didn't just purely go dark grey from the bottom, light grey from the top and then blend in, in the arms, oh, come back in, there we go, in the arms, so we're just under the, the line of the shirt there where there'd be a bit of shadow and where the muscles would be, so under there, I blended in some dark grey there as well and then as you can see with the wash going over the top, it creates a shadow in there, a shadow in where the elbow is, you can see a shadow inside on the inside line of the arm there, so without actually having to create the shadows, I just very quickly wet blended them in um, and then that created that. Um, so then, yep, yeah, so that was the skin tone done. And then, so hopefully if I get the photos working, you'll be able to see a photo of one of these bigger guys um, with the skin done for the first, first coat. Um, and then over the top of that, I then did a very, very thin wash of just Agrax Earthshade. Um, and that was just to dirty it up a bit. So it wasn't a full wash. It was very, very watered down just to dull it a little bit, just to fall into a few more of those recesses. Like you can see, there's a couple of muscle sort of um, details going on there, just to sit in those recesses a little bit more, just to bring a little bit more of that shadow out. And that's sort of how I ended up with, with that tone there. So yeah, so I was really, really happy with that. Um, so then gave that a really, really good dry. Um, and then I went on to the clothes. So I was, I was batch painting at this point. Um, and because there's 33 of each of them, I did each as like, I did all of these guys, you know, then I did all of these guys and then all of, all of these ones. So I did, I did, a, I did a complete model before I moved on to the other ones. I think actually I did these ones first, but just for the for the point of the exercise, did all of one type first. And I split them into groups of about five to six. So there's about five or six of each colored pants. So there's about five or six with green pants, five or six with yellow, with brown. Um, you can see that one there is, uh, nope, not that. I can't think of the name of it. Ah, oh, there we go. So this guy here, that's so Caribou Crimson is the colour of his pants. So there would have been five or six of them. Um, I've got a few more off to the side. Ah, so then, yep, so a few with, that's the Cassandora Yellow for the pants. Uh, what else have we got? I think that's, that might be... Uh, null oil just straight over the dark grey so then five or six of them just to mix them up a little bit so I would have done uh, so yes yeah, so I had them in rows of about five or six um, so there's about five different colors of pants did the caraberg crimson the blue whatever that's called all the names are totally totally escaping me dragging off nightshade five or six of them five or six of the yellow the green and so on. So then, um, yeah, did, did a wash on them. Um, I'm pretty sure there's two, two coats on each. Um, and then once I'd done the pants, 
Um, oh, and there was a black wash on the shoes. Once I'd done, done them, um, I then did within each of the groups of five based on their colours, so I would have had, you know, five or six in a row with the Caraberg Crimson Pants, I then did one of each colour of shirts. So this guy here, I reckon... I'm not sure. I reckon he's actually got no wash for his shirt. So that gives you a bit of an idea of the of the grey that I had blended in at the top, which is why I reckon you can see that blend happening through there. So I reckon he's got no wash for his shirt. But if I find another Caraberg... Uh, nope. So I reckon he's got probably known oil there, or it might actually be the Seraphim Sepia. Um, there's the, whoops, there's the Cassandori Yellow. Uh, and now I'm struggling to see another big guy with the red pants. Anyway, so some of them have, whoops, some of them have, yep, so green shirt. So, yeah, so that's how I how I went about that. And I did that same process for each of the each of the minis, each of the, the groups of models. So yeah, so there's about five or six of the same coloured pants, but all of them have a different coloured shirt. And the idea of that is just once they're on the on the table, there's a bit of bit of colour variety. So I'll pop those guys away and I'll stick with stick with him. So yeah, so two coats for the pants, two coats for the shirt, um, and then I just used the Caribou Crimson for the tie, and all of them have the same coloured tie. That was just to just to keep it simple. I figured that was a tiny, tiny detail. I didn't need to do different colours for them. So we've now done a prime. We've done our base coat with dark grey through to light grey, almost white wet blended in the middle with a horizontal um, horizontal strokes with a brush and blended in some dark greys into where the shadows would be. Black wash for the shoes and then group them um, into about five or six in each group purely because there's 33 of each so I just sort of worked out a sort of nice round numbers um, and then each group of five or six then got the same coloured pants with two coats of wash and then each one within that group got a different coloured wash for the shirt. And for him, he's got no um, no wash on his shirt. So then the last step, and I think the photo that will be coming up, if it works, will be an Agrax Earthshade wash to the whole mini. But I think what I actually did was because that was too dark, I did a Seraphim sepia wash to the whole mini. So with this guy here, um, you can sort of tell, I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up, you can see a spot, there's a spot just here, you can just see a little bit of a what of the washer's pool there, it's just that slightly off kind of yellowish tone, um, and that's from the sepia wash. So that just dulled everything down a little bit more, added a little bit more definition to um, to the details. So I reckon he doesn't have any Agrax on him at all, um, except for maybe the skin. It was either an Agrax or Seraphim final wash on the skin, um, and then a Seraphim wash to all of the clothes. Um, and then once that was done, it was then a case of, so painting the base, um, and with the big guys, because their base was a bit bigger, um, I wet blended in, so I did a base coat of grey, and then I wet blended in some black and some white, hopefully you can sort of just pick that up, get a little bit of shadow there, um, to give a bit of a concrete look. And then when the whole thing was dry, I then went over with some, with some blood. And so the way that I did that, and if you've watched the, the playable character videos, you'll have seen me do this. I've just taken one of my old brushes that I don't use anymore. This is just a size two. I flared out the bristles, really sort of spread them out so that they weren't clumped together. So really, really spread them out. Um, and then with a mix of r mostly red and a little bit of brown, we're now with normal like um, acrylic paint, mostly red, a little bit of brown, 
um, just uh, just got uh, paint on the tips, wash some of it, brush some of it off onto the paper towels, and then kind of like a cross between dry brushing and stippling, then just just with the with the tips, um, just sort of stabbed it on there, and by having the the tips of the bristles spread apart, it gave a bit of a spattering effect. And you can sort of see here, this has just come about from the from the ends of the tips being spread apart. And then just, yeah, did it in different spots. Um, and you can see a couple of spots like here. See how there's a little bit that's a bit brighter there. So um, would have done quite a, um, yep, so red with a bit of brown would have gone into that area. And then when that was dry, then went back with just red and just put a little bit over the top just to bring that out a little bit more and make it look a little bit more fresh. The more brown that was in there, the older it looked. Um, and then having a little bit of little bit of just pure red just livened it up a little bit just to make it look a little bit more, more recent. Um, did a bit around the mouth so it looks like they've been eating. And then all of them got a bit around the hands and, and up the arms a little bit. So like they've been holding on to, you know, someone that they've found and killed. So... Yeah, they all got a slightly different um, sort of blood, um, you know, spattering pattern. Um, you know, um, some had I did it um, some with it coming down their coming down their front, so it's like they've had a big feed and it's run down their shirt. Um, others, you know, up on their back, just just different spots, just to add a little bit of variety. So yeah, so that was the the process that I went about for painting for painting them. So just a, a really quick recap. So prime in black, then base coat, dark gray from the bottom up to about halfway, light gray, almost white from the head down. And then with a horizontal motion, blend that together to get that transition, work in some dark gray in where the shadows would be. Then when that's totally dry, um, it did a wash for the skin, and that was a mix of green, yellow, and then so Biltan, Cassandora yellow, and Sarah from Sepia. Mostly yellow, a little bit of green, a little bit of Sepia. Then um, I honestly can't remember whether it was there, then one final Agrax or Seraphim over, over the top. I'm going to say the Sepia wash straight over the top after that. that skin tone was dry then after that was then the pants so again um, split them into groups of five or six painted all of them within a group same colored pants uh, black wash for the shoes um, and then each of them within the group got a different colored shirt then when all of that was dry Seraphim wash, so the sepia wash over the top, just to dull it all down a little bit and dirty it up a little bit, um, and then painted the base, and then a bit of a blood effect. Oh, and also I did a bit of um, bit of a blood effect on the base as well for some of them, so it looks like they've sort of been scraping their feet along. Not all of them got that though. I varied that a little bit so that you know it wasn't sort of just kind of generic. Um, some of them look a little bit different. So yeah, so that's the process for them. Um, and then I worked out that all up, it was 10 to 15 minutes for each mini. Um, if I did one as a one-off, it would obviously be longer than that, but doing them in batches, and I kind of did about, probably about 20 or so at a time. So four different pant colors at a time. Um, and yeah, I mean, so you could you could do this in one sitting. I, I didn't have time to do it in one sitting. Um, did it over the, over the course of a couple of nights. But yeah, about 10 to 15 minutes for each mini. Um, so that was them. And then for each of these, it's the exact same process. Prime, dark gray to light gray, pants done in groups with the with the girls I just did their um, dresses in groups so about five or six blue five or six green and so on um, and then yeah blood effect 
bases. Um, for most of these, this would have been an earlier one. Um, I did do go for a bit of a concrete effect. I gave up after that after a little while because the, the bases are just too small. Um, and you can see he's got a bit of that concrete effect as well. Again, gave up after that, just did straight grey. So that's how I went about doing those ones. So then, then there's the the Alpha, who's our he's our big dude. Um, he had a bit of a different process because because he's quite that you know he's quite a bit bigger, a little bit more unique. Wanted a little bit more sort of effects with him. So initial stage was the same prime, um, and then do that same uh, base coat. Dark grey up through to light grey, um, blend in some of the dark grey into where the shadows would be. Um, and then did his skin. So that was the exact same tone as, as you can see, the skin tone is the same. So everything up till that point is the same. Um, and then I did, did his pants. So that was a bit of a reddish orange kind of colour. Now within the game, I haven't gotten to a scenario with him in it, but from reading briefly, um, I think you're going to try and get, he, he's um, been tested on, I think, which has created this mutation. And so what I kind of went for was a bit of a prison kind of colour. So maybe he was like an inmate that was then taken by whoever is um, you know, created the zombie outbreak, so he might have been an inmate being tested on. So I went for like yeah, a prison sort of um, jumpsuit kind of colour. So I painted yeah you know, his pants, the belt in there. That's all pretty just pretty normal there. Um, but then with all of these big, bulgy, gross, wart kind of things all over him, um, I wanted to give them a bit of a pussy kind of purpley gross kind of look about them so I did a purple coat on them and then just wet blended in I'm not sure if one gives a bit more of the effect than the other we'll just stick with this one here um, and then just wet blended in light purple at the top blended that blended that out so I went from light purple at sort of the the tip of the wart growth thing lump whatever um, and then put some blue kind of in the middle point where the light pink or the light purple met the purple, and it just kind of gave, um, I don't know how to describe it, it gave it the effect that you, that you can see. Um, and then I painted some purple veins running out. Now, they're not the ones that you can actually see there, more like these ones that are here. So you can see some of these thin purple ones running out there. Uh, and that's probably about the only spot that you'll really be able to be able to pick them up. There's some more coming off of his neck there. So I did all of that. Then I did an Agrax wash over the whole of his skin and probably over his pants as well. Um, and then what that did is it knocked, so you can see like this, the purple that's on these growths here is the same colour that these veins were, but by doing the wash over the top, it knocked the, the veins down and gave them that really, really sort of dull kind of look. So then I went back over all of these, these lumps and bumps, gave them that same effect again so that they stand out a little bit more against the dark, darker skin, and then repainted some of the veins coming out from these growth. So it's like, this is where they've been testing on and this is where he's been jabbed with, um, you know, the, the virus, and then it's spreading out to, to continue to take over him. Um... So yeah, everything else is just pretty, pretty typical. So normal highlighting and shading. So they did a wash on his pants, and then you can see some some uh, highlighting on the edge of edge of his pants um, with quite a with quite a stark contrast, um, so that that sort of really really stands out. Um, and then yeah, and then really sort of like just the just the blood effect. So there was just some some highlighting on the bodies that are sticking out of his stomach there, up on his up on his face. Really really basic. Um, so it's just a lighter version of the of the skin tone. Um, and then yeah, did the blood effect. Now initially uh, initially sorry, I went overboard with the blood. It just covered him too much. 
So then I went back and just with a skin tone just put some of these. Um, there's actually some moulding in here where it looks like there's probably like some scratches across his chest, something like that. I'm not really sure exactly what it's supposed to be. So I went back and just put those sort of um, followed those contours of the model um, and that just sort of knocked some of the blood away and sort of left him, left him where he is. So that's pretty much the approach that I took for him. So he might have been... Or maybe an, an hour to an hour and a half to, to paint him, I suppose. Probably a bit less than an hour and a half, hour, hour and a quarter, something like that. Um, and then, but yeah, 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes for, for these guys. So, yeah, I think that's, that's all of the steps that I went through to, to paint up all of the, all of the zombies. Um, and, yeah, so very, um, in terms of time management, very, very easy. Um, yeah, just a, just a couple of hours to go through all of them. Um, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, so probably maybe three hours, something like that, to paint all 99 of these, somewhere around there, I suppose. And then, yeah, probably a, a little bit over an hour to, to do him. So played a few games with these now. Um, and these guys look really, really good in the middle. Um, there's a good bit of a contrast there, um, so that they, they do look like there's light hitting the... Oh, sorry there, camera decided to stop. So, yeah, so gave the exact effect that I wanted. Super easy contrast with a bit of light. Um, good enough effect that they, they look like zombies. They've got a bit of... Come back in. There you go. Got a bit of blood. Um but didn't have to spend too much time doing it. So that was, that was exactly what I, what I was after. So yeah, so there we go. Um, so hopefully that gives you a good enough overview of how I paint the zombies. Um, I hope there's some aspect of that that you might be able to use in your own painting. Um, but I, I, I do definitely encourage you to go and check out all of the different videos that are out there on YouTube because there are some, there are a lot of different approaches. Um, and depending on the effect that you want, different videos are going to give you um, better advice than others. I just, I just happened to stumble across one that really fit the criteria that I wanted and I ran with that. So yeah, so like I said, I'll have that linked in the description below. Um, but yeah, so that's it. So this is, should be, the last video in this series. So this is Zombie 15 done. Playable characters are done, the eight of them. Zombies are done. I can't think of anything else that I need to cover in this in this series. So thank you so, so much for giving up some time to, to watch me paint or to listen to how I painted them. Really, really hope you've gotten something out of them, something that you can take away and use in your own painting, or you've um, just simply in enjoyed watching. As always, please put a um, comment below, something that you liked about these videos, something that you think can be improved. Um, always looking to make these as good as possible so that you guys can get everything out of them that you can. Um, and yeah, hit the like and subscribe so that you can keep up to date with when these videos come out. Um, with this being the end of the Zombie 15 videos, I'll now get into another series, probably Mansions of Madness, so keep an eye out for them if that's something that you'd be interested in. Um, but yeah, other than that, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Thanks for stopping by. Cheers.